Welcome, welcome, welcome to Power Mondo, an interview series where we talk to mixed media and fiber artists all around the world. And today we have a very special guest for you. You're going to love this. So, you know, put all the other windows out because you want to be focusing on this. He's Pieces are jaw-dropping. You're going to love his style for sculpting. And, of course, we are going to uh, see a little bit about the place he lives in, his studio, lots of stuff for you. But before we go there, a few announcements. First of all, we are live. And the main reason we are live is because we, we really like your interaction with us. You have a chat box either beside or below the video, depending on where you're watching. Use the chat box not only to interact with the people watching, but to send questions to these amazing artists. So anytime you want, just ask a question. I'll get here on my computer. And of course, I will ask him, and he will answer directly to you. We also ask you to share this content. This is content only, nothing is going to be sold here. So you're safe to post this on groups on social media. You know, start to post yourself and put on your profile. Uh, if you see a post about this, uh, you know, just, just comment on that. All those things help with visibility, help to get the word out about this artist, and also what we do here, that is to highlight the work of artists all around the world. Now, we are going to be talking about a product that is called PowerPoint, actually it's a line of products. So in any point in time that you say, okay, I never heard of this, or I don't know how to, to where to go get this, this products, well, at the bottom of the screen, you are always going to see three websites, okay? PowerPoAmerica.com is if you are in, a, in the United States. So you go check there if you are in the United States. Or escapes.yolast.com is if you're in Newfoundland, for example, that's where you want to go. And PowerPoll.com, if you click on distributors, you're going to see a list of countries and distributors all around the world. So wherever you are located, located, there is a distributor around you. So go check for those and, you know, get in touch with them. You're going to see that there are many opportunities besides the product itself. So make sure uh, you, you find where your distributor is for your area, okay? So this is important because every single time I say, but what is this? I want to know more. Uh, is this a product as well? Can I take a course? Can I become a teacher and teach these techniques? I think I could do that. Well, you need to find a distributor in your area first and then everything goes from there. So those are my announcements. I now want to invite here Dwight Saunders from Newfoundland. How are you doing today, Dwight? I'm super, thank you so much. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm so glad to have you here. We were just talking about the beautiful place where you live and you told me that there are 5,000 people there, right? There is 5,000 people and we have almost a square meter of land per person. That's awesome. That's so cool. Dwight, first of all, I want to ask you what attracted you to art in general? How long have you been in touch with art? And, and, and then how you became a sculptor? Well, as a kid, my grandmother was very inspiring. My grandmother um, created quilts and clothing uh -huh. and she had a wonderful singer sewing machine that did not have a motor on it. So as children, she would allow us to turn the handle for her as she sewed. Uh -huh. and my grandmother was also a rug maker, so I learned rug making with her. And naturally, uh, that's my biggest inspiration. Tell me about the rug making. Uh, was it rug hooking or another technique or, or tapestry? What was it exactly? She did utilitarian rugs that were made from old clothing. And I still do the same technique today. That's awesome. That's awesome. I want to see some. And how did you get in touch with the sculpting side and PowerPoint? Uh, 10 years ago, I became very interested in wanting to explore uh, more ways to work with fiber. Uh, mm -hmm. I've always been a fiber artist ever since I was a child. I own my own clothing uh, line for 25 years. I wow. custom uh, wedding gowns. And Big garments was no longer something I wanted to handle and I didn't like custom work anymore. So I wanted to 
have a medium that was somewhat familiar and sculpting was unfamiliar, but fabric draping was familiar. And I saw an ad in a European magazine for Parvapol and I just knew it was for me. I took my uh, instructor's course 10 years ago and the rest is history. I just love the medium. I work with it every day. That's so good. That's so good. And then, of course, you you became the the distributor in Newfoundland. Uh, but you told me that there there's a recent change as well, right? Yes, we've had a recent change. I am now the distributor for the Atlantic provinces. We need to uh, get more uh, instructors because. Mm -hmm. It's an area that's really not been explored. As you said, it's relatively new. Yes, the product is about 20 years old, but people are still just learning about it. And I'll be happy to help people become instructors to teach other people. Um, it's my passion and I'm sure there are other people out there that would just love this product. You know, everybody that I've seen so far that got in touch with this medium, fell in love with it, right? Because the possibilities are amazing. And the, the extra fact that if people want to create, for example, garden sculptures that can go outside in the weather, and it doesn't matter where they are in the world, too hot, too cold, uh, the product can withstand that is really an amazing uh, feature of this. Now, uh, we, which are the provinces then that you are overseeing right now? So we have Newfoundland, we have PEI, Nova Scotia, and New Brunswick. That's so cool. That's so cool. Uh, you know, we we were talking uh, before, of course, the this interview started, and we found some commonalities. I told him my my sister actually just moved to New Brunswick uh, about three days ago. But did you know that my grandfather, uh, his profession was exactly making wedding gowns. So, and yeah. yes, and he told me, he taught me so much about uh, the fabric and the, uh, how important it is to touch. So I have very good memories with that. Uh, Dwight, would you like to know the countries that are watching you right now, just to make you a little bit more nervous? Sure. Okay, so we have USA, Canada, Mexico, Poland, Israel, Australia, South Africa, Spain, Netherlands, Pakistan, uh, po Poland, I mentioned, Serbia, and Romania watching you right now. Isn't that cool? It's fantastic, it's and awesome. we all have a common interest. <laughs> so before we move on, I'd like to show a few pictures of your work. And feel free to comment what has inspired you to make them. And uh, if you made for a special place or a gallery or something, uh, you, can, you can comment on those. So let's see the first one. Uh, I like steampunk art. And um, it's a great way to recycle old things that we have lying around. And often it would end up in landfill. So this lady is made with an old tablecloth is the basis of what she's made with. And then everything else is just a structure made from wires. Very cool. And this one is recycling a very old book um, that was a little bit more difficult to work with because it would fall apart almost every time that I put uh, the Parvapol product on it. Um, and again, it's recycling at its best. It's another old uh, doily and uh, a piece of a wedding dress, actually. Mm -hmm. The it's same. The same uh, thing. The same thing, with, but with a modern book. It's a great way to get rid of an old textbook. <laughs> oh, and then do we have the rooster. Then <laughs> we have the rooster out in the yard. Uh, I have had uh, some of my pieces outside for 10 years already. And when we just sold our home in Ontario, moved to Newfoundland, uh, one of the conditions of the house was that my seven foot mermaid that was on the lawn stayed with the house. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And uh, Dwight, so you're not a, nat a native uh, to Newfoundland, correct? 
Actually, I am. I was born here, but lived most of my life elsewhere. Uh -huh. uh, one of Newfoundlanders uh, things is, is no matter where you are, when it's time to retire, you want to come home as we yes. say in Newfoundland. Yes. And tell me three things that you think is amazing about living there. The, it's not a climate. That's number one. <laughs> it is the freedom that we have here. Um, we have fresh air that is just fantastic. When we go outside, we have the ocean and the air is just so beautiful here. The scenery is amazing and the people are so wonderful here. That's so good. How cold does it get there? It doesn't really get that cold as it does in the rest of Canada, uh, but it stays cold for about six months. Today, it's only five degrees here. Oh gosh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we get a lot of rain and fog. Oh boy. You know, I'm so happy because today it's the first day here in Utah that is going to be above 21 centigrades, which for us is summer weather already. So it's, it's been very cold this winter, but now it's getting warmer. So what do you say if we show everybody that is watching a little bit of the place that you live in? Certainly. Awesome. And of course, we want to thank the Newfoundland and Labrador Department of Tourism uh, for making this video available to you. Let's take a watch. is a breath to lift you up and carry you away to a place with more questions than answers where your imagination can run free And everything lives and breathes in the moment. And all that matters is in front of you. And while good things come to those that wait, great things come to those that wonder. Oh, I want to retire there too. That's my new favorite place. It's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I love the last phrase that they show in the video. Stay curious. That word has a lot of meaning to me. <laughs> so, so Dwight, let's take a look at some of the pieces that you have with you there. And, and just about the, the pieces that we show in the pictures, Wendy Jones said, that is exquisite. And Brenda Helfrich, that is so cool. So let's see some of the pieces you have there with you. Which one are you going to choose to show us first? I am going to show you one of the fun pieces. Yes. And it's not typical of what I normally do. I work, I like to work a lot with the bronze color, mm -hmm. but every now and then I just have to break out and add color. Uh-huh. And what have you and, used for the feathers? Okay, so this was again outside my box. Uh, I just used fabric wrappers on him and that is the only things that are on him um and he is made with a wire structure mm -hmm. and 
Of course, I like driftwood. Yes, and oh, I bet sorry, you find a lot around. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and that is one of the things I like to do. I've been known to climb over a, a huge rock to get to that special piece of driftwood. Oh, gosh. Uh -huh. And how big is this guy? Whoop, Whoop. lost everybody. I'll be okay. right back with you. Uh, this piece <laughs> is approximately uh, two and a half feet across, and uh -huh. it is uh, probably about two feet tall. Well, quite, quite a, a good big guy there. Bree's saying about yes. the place, such a beautiful place. I, I am in love with that place. When I was, I, I, I'm not a city girl whatsoever. I like nature a lot. So yeah, perfect place to, for us to, to retire or just go visit. Why not? Right? Exactly. Uh, we have the have... best of both worlds. We're, we're an hour and a half from the city. Oh. So the city is available to us, but uh -huh. we live remote. That's awesome. That's awesome. So do you have another piece to show us? Sure. Let's find somebody. I'm going to show you a piece that's very similar to the one behind me. Uh -huh. uh, this piece is made mostly just with um, art stone. I do um, pottery and I do enjoy working with the art uh, stone and making the rose clay uh, because I don't have to fire it and put it in a kiln. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. Uh, Don is saying, um, oh my gosh, the white figures, love those and have not seen them before. Why don't uh, show us one of them for, oh, look at this. That's a wall piece, okay. right? I'm not sure. There we go. Yeah. Um, this one, there is a little figure down in the bottom. Mm -hmm. And I like to use anything that I can find. His hair is made from a scrunchie. Uh -huh. And back back when i started with parvapole all our products came uh, with styrofoam around them so the circles made all of the styrofoam oh, and yeah. then it has a piece of fabric that's straight over it this is a class that we would do and it would take about six hours to make one like this uh-huh and, and it's a wall piece correct it's a wall piece uh i don't know if you noticed the piece behind me of the um the people oh, yes. Uh -huh. um, I like to paint using um, the parvapole, parvaplast, a uh, combination of parvapole and parvaplast to make the medium that I use in my painting. It gives texture and uh, it gives um, depth to my painting. So and then often I'll outline my figures with the parvapole. So did you use acrylic or something else to for the... The drawing part and the painting or just the parvaplast with the colors so i start with the parvaplast and i add the texture to it and then i will make the outline with uh parvaplast and then paint on top of that with acrylic paints oh okay that's very interesting that's very interesting so so tell me a little bit about and joe rebecca is saying i love the figure groups um Don, Don said, oh my gosh, the white figures, love those and have not seen them before. Uh, Judy saying, that is a gorgeous piece, Dwight. And Bree is asking, Dwight, on the white ones, did you use clear and white material or did you color the power pole? No, these ones are using the natural fiber. Uh, so these were uh, doilies. Oh. Going to lift one up those. for you to see here. Yeah. Um, so it it was clear, powerful on this one. Um, and if you get tired of it, you can always paint it later and have a new sculpture <laughs> in your house to match your decor. <laughs> they look gorgeous. In it's white very color. recyclable and very forgiving. Uh -huh. um, I I'll just bring another one close by here so you can have a look. Oh, I like these, of course, and. Oh. Uh, I incorporate what I like into my sculptures. Uh -huh. Very so good. I'll just bring that one all the way. Um, so yes, the clear particle is what I used on these ones. Okay. And each one of them had the steampunk tendencies in them as well. Uh-huh. And, and this uh, lady? This is the latest piece. Uh-huh. Uh, this is from the class that I taught last week. 
Um, everybody made a steampunk piece last week in our class, so I just wanted to show that. It's we're pretty excited because we haven't been able to teach for a long time, and uh -huh. I actually had a live class last week, so I'm very oh, that's awesome. happy about that. And you use doilies on this one as well? This one is very interesting. Um, the wrap that this lady has around her, uh, most of us are old enough to remember the 1950s, and on the back of all the couches and on the arms, there used to be a little, uh, almost like a placemat. Yeah. So this piece is probably about 60, 70 years old that I used on here as a wrap. Uh -huh. And of course it would have been covered with plastic back in these days because the furniture was not meant to be sit on. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's gorgeous. I, I like this is one of the things that really attract me is, is the recycling part and how we can even get uh, things that have an emotional thing with us. For example, maybe a doily that your grandmother made that you can repurpose yeah. that instead of living in a drawer. We saw with Gwen that she used a tricycle, a vintage tricycle to create a, a full size sculpture. So it gives us this possibility of you know, using things that have meaning to us mm -hmm. in a new way and repurposing, giving a new purpose, not repurposing, but giving a new purpose to the piece. Correct? Correct. That's awesome. The uh, piece that I have in front of me at the moment is a very old um, Lady Zanke. And you can see the finished edges on it. Awesome. And that became her top. So once again, it's using uh, sentimental pieces uh -huh. and making them into um, a, a garment. So it do look like a garment, uh -huh. even though it's an handkerchief. That's very cool. Now, Dwight, in this case, for example, I know there's a lot of drapey, there is a lot of, uh, that I can see um, movement in those, in, in the fabric that you have used. How long does it take you to create a piece like this? I would make this piece in about four or five hours. Okay. Oh, well, not bad at all. I'm very fast. <laughs> <laughs> I want instant face. gratification. <laughs> That's good. That's like me. And, and, and the face, uh, what did you use for the face? It's, uh, this one has a porcelain face on it. Uh, so ceramic. Uh -huh. And uh, so you can make these in advance and then use them to make the piece a little bit more realistic uh -huh. though i prefer not to have faces on them because then you can imagine them as somebody else and True. create stories that yes. uh, makes the sculpture come alive yes true now do you sell your sculptures Yes, I do. Uh, as a matter of fact, we had a wonderful art show uh, two weeks ago, my first one in two years. And uh, I was lucky I sold uh, most of my major pieces that I had made for the art show. And the interest was amazing because most people never seen carbon pole before. Uh-huh. Isn't, isn't that amazing? Because I know in Canada, for example, uh, you have a lot of distrib a lot, lot more distributors than here, for example. And so, and Power Paul has been around Canada for a while, but it's still extremely new to most people, correct? That is correct. Uh, it, most people have never heard of Power Paul. Uh, I think in certain provinces, it's probably a little bit more exposed than others, but like moving to Newfoundland two years ago, I realized that most people never heard of Parvapol mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it's fresh, new, uh -huh. yeah. and we just need more uh, instructors to be able to get this wonderful hobby out to people. Totally and it's a, Now, Dwight, uh, if you were going to sell, for example, the last piece that you showed us, what price point would you put on that one? I'm just looking her up. She is $245. Uh -huh. Look at this. Amazing, amazing. You were saying about how it's a, a new product, and Leslie is saying, I find this very interesting. I've been a polymer clay artist for 24 years. How would you say this is better or different? Have you ever worked with polymer clay, Dwight? Yes. Uh, the polymer clay is wonderful to incorporate in the um, 
the fabric cart. The fabric cart will give you a texture and the draping effects that you can't really do easily. Yes, you can do it with uh, polymer clay, but here you're working with a totally different thing altogether. So incorporating the hands and the face and making props uh, is wonderful. So combining the two, uh, we're seeing a lot of artists doing that at the moment, and I find that very interesting. Yes, I agree with you. Yeah, the polymer clay gives uh, the possibility of, of defined features, for example, if you like to make faces, right? But then you mm -hmm. have, uh, if you combine with, with these other techniques and the power pole, you can create bigger pieces, and then there is the weather part that you can also put in the garden and and use that. The power pot that you used on this piece specifically, was it bronze? No, this was black. I this use a lot black. of black uh, in my sculptures. That way I can uh, put any finish on it that I want to do. That's very cool. Yeah, I, I, it's interesting because I, I've been noticing more and more that a lot of people like the black because if they add color, for example, it will give a, a different feel than doing that with white and then adding color. Correct. Now, uh, again, for everybody that is interested in knowing more about the product name itself, on the bottom of the screen, you will find uh, three websites. One is for the US, the other one is for the provinces that uh, Dwight represent, and powerpal.com. You click on distributors and there's going to be a list all around the world which distributor is closest to you. And you might want to get in touch with them, not only because of the products, but the possibilities of you taking courses. So Dwight, you just told me that you can give in-person cl uh, classes again uh, right now, correct? Tell me a little bit about how, how you structure the classes and, and then we'll talk about the space that you have. Fabulous. Um, my classes, I do a one day class where you will uh, arrive around 9, 9.30 in the morning. We will uh, work on making the frame, uh, the armature. Then we will uh, add to that to make the bodies. And by lunchtime, we have our bodies made and positioned. So during lunchtime, which we always provide a homemade lunch during our classes. Uh, which is one of the highlights of our uh, program. The um, afternoon is spent draping and dressing, uh, creating hair and props that we will use on our sculptures. By the end of the day, around four o'clock, everybody will be very excited because they've completed their first sculpture. And in some cases, I've had people do as many as 50 classes with me. Wow. So they always find something new. So <laughs> the wonderful thing about it is everybody has a totally different sculpture at the end of the day, even though we started out with the same armature. Uh, we encourage everyone to be individual. I want to inspire, not have you recreate what I've already done. So I'm here to coach each individual to have a piece that's exciting to them. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we offer is a five day immersion program where you come and stay with us. We have 10,000 square feet in our studio, which is a little different. We also provide six guest bedrooms and we provide homemade meals. And oh, we take my you sightseeing. oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> we can get our own food so, then. Can we go and collect? We are looking food? forward to welcoming everybody as soon as this COVID uh, episode is over. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. And of course, uh, you offer certification uh, as well for those that want to create a career out of this, right? That is correct, yes. And I really want to find more um, certified instructors so that we can uh, get the product uh, into more people's hands and mm -hmm. in the Atlantic provinces. Uh, we only have one trained individual in Newfoundland so far, which we were able to certify last year. Uh -huh. And now I'm looking forward to being able to teach people in Nova Scotia, PEI and New Brunswick. Uh -huh. Yes, you know, I think it's really important uh, for you to think if you, you know, if of course, first you need to dab your hands into the product, see if it talks to you 
or not, but it is a great opportunity because it doesn't matter where you are in the world. Uh, if you do art shows, if you, if you do craft shows, you're going to see that if you start making this type of pieces and taking them there, you're going to be the only one dealing with this medium. And people, it really is jaw dropping when you tell them, you know, this is sculpture. Of course, you can put in your living room, but this one you can you can leave outside as as a garden sculpture. And if you've been following the interviews, there are all sizes of sculptures that can be made with this medium. It's an interesting side business as well. You start teaching; it's super fun. I think we are all really uh, eager to have people around us, right? That that's one thing. It's that unfulfilled hole in our hearts right now uh, is this disconnection that we were forced to have. Now we want to be together. Now we want to get together. Uh, not only you're going to be getting together with people uh, uh, during a course, uh, you are going to be empowering them to start something new. And it's an interesting uh, economic ec uh, extra that you can bring to you as well. So think about it because it may be really that gold mine that you were looking for in the sense of find something different, find something that you can tell your stories in the way that you want, like Dwight does. He gets recycled material, he gets old old doilies, old, old fabric and uses that. I mean, just imagine the possibilities around that for you specifically. And to Add to that the fact that you can get groups together and teach them. So think about, okay, maybe I, I should go deep, take one course first, and then if that's your thing, then you, you move forward and maybe get a certification and start teaching. Now, do I tell, I have a few comments here for you first, but then I want to know more about your studio. You said it's a I mean, it's bigger than the studio we have here, and you, you give classes there, so that's phenomenal. But Wendy Jones said, I hope I might add regarding your home to borrow from Alan, Alan Patton, a great South African author. Ah, but your land is beautiful. Uh, Andrea would love to hear more about the sculptures made from textbooks. So, so how exactly did you use the textbooks in those sculptures that we saw? And of course, if you have one around you. Just going to bring one in, oh. you can see it. Uh -huh. So instead of using uh, fabric or um, wrappers on this particular one, I cut up old uh, books. They are cut into little pieces about uh, half an inch wide and probably about two to three inches long. If they're any longer than that, once the clear parvopole goes on them, they'll have a tendency to rip when they start getting uh, saturated. So this particular one, everything has been made from the textbook and then it's been embellished with um, the tablecloth, was cut into small pieces. That's the other thing that you have to do is when you are looking at a doily, we don't just look at it as a complete doily. There might be only one part that you want to make the garter from and you say, oh, that's the perfect part. The edging may become a pair of tights or a stocking. Um, you, you look at another part of it and you'll say, oh, this will make a wonderful bustle. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at your pieces and identify the things within the piece that you're able to turn it into something else. Um, I, I never look at one piece of fabric as one thing. I try to look at the different parts of the fabrics and deconstruct it. Great advice. That's great advice. I love that. Uh, Norma is saying your pieces are stunning. Uh, Rina is saying love the paper on the faces and hats and on the instruments. Rina, do, I, do you sculpt the faces and hats or, and hands or do you use molds? They are beautiful. Uh, both, actually. Um, I sometimes will just use wires. I'm going to try to reach around, um, reach a, actually, I'll, I'll grab the ballerina, which is close to me. Uh, this is a very simple one. And as you can see, the hands are just made with the same wire that we make the uh, armature from. Mm -hmm. So this is a runaway ballerina. <laughs> and this one is made with just the um, the parvopole wrappers. Okay, very cool, very cool. 
Uh, Judy is saying, Dwight is not only an amazing artist, but also an excellent teacher. Aha, that's good. So I think she took a class <laughs> with you. Dwight, let's take a look at some pictures of your place then and tell us how you organize things at classes, etc. We have a few pictures of your place. So let's start here. Certainly. That's the entrance to the um, the gallery, uh, which acts as a lounge. We really enjoy the, the lounge gallery because we have the most amazing sunsets. And after spending a day in the studio, we can just sit there and in, enjoy each other's conversation and get excited about the next workshop they want to do. Um, so this is the entrance to the studio. And this is uh, one section. So we do have two sections in the studio. So there's two conversation pits. So if there's people who want to just sit around and have a chat individually with somebody else, there are couches in one end and we have the comfy chairs in the other end. We have an amazing view of the harbor from here and we can see uh, the ocean from here. In July and August month, it's not unusual to be able to see whales uh, in the harbor as well. But the chair that you can just see the little piece is my comfort zone uh, where I sit almost every night to watch the sunset and to look over the ocean. Very cool. And that piece in the back actually uh, is one of the pieces we had to promote is also all done with power ball, the, the wall piece. Yes, I love to do um, the flat works and uh, that's one of my earlier pieces. Uh, this particular one is made with uh, a combination of a mop, t-shirt and some very old uh, doilies. Very cool. And the background is done with uh, wrappers. Um, you're seeing a new piece come in there is the uh, mermaid again is done uh, in the technique that I'm going to be showing you in the demo. Oh, cool. And on the table, there are some puffins. Ah, now we're into the teaching studio. Uh -huh. uh, this is very comfortable for six people to work. And um, that's also my comfort level because I like to be able to offer individual attention uh, to each person that's in the class. Uh, in the background, you can see one of my paintings that's made from pine cones. And I also do some 2D things. The whale that's closest to the cabinet is a 2D. And that one uh is done with art stone and using my uh, metal technique mm -hmm. the whale that's uh on there again is using my metal technique Very cool. the a piece of artwork that's close to the cabinet there is done with uh, rose clay so it's a uh, sculpture more uh, it's got relief mm -hmm. ah that's my class from last week when all oh. the, this was approximately around uh, 2 p.m. in the afternoon when everybody was getting inspired. And as you can see, there's no two sculptures looking alike in there. Uh huh. They're cool. Oh, very that's a little cool. closer uh -huh. up. And it's interesting what you were saying about trying out a class. Uh, this particular class, they were all artists and. Uh, one of the individuals tried doing a class that had the black parvapole pole in it and she hated it uh -huh. and said, I never want to do that again. And then she saw one of my white figurines and she said, oh, I want to do that. <laughs> and when she worked with the transparent uh, last week, she enjoyed it immensely and can hardly wait to do another workshop. Uh huh. That's cool. And that's in my studio, which has just got some of the supplies on the bottom, little inspiration of music. And uh, it goes into my private studio, which I wouldn't dare let anyone go in right now because it's chaotic in there. I, <laughs> I am a fabric artist. I work uh, with textiles. I love to quilt. I love to uh, do rug oaking. 
Uh, I do felting and as a matter of fact, you can see some of my little scenes of applique on the uh, middle section of the bookcase. So my studio is is chaotic because I will have several projects going at once. I may be in the middle of doing something that inspires me to go on to make something totally different. So like yesterday, I was making a sculpture and an applique at the same time. Yeah, you know what? We could be best friends. You should come to my studio. <laughs> I'm <see>. sure. <laughs> How many projects we have there. That's a gorgeous place. So do you, and of course, that's the view. Uh, right? This is the view from my chair. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, I would love that. Very good. It's cool. the. Go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say it's the one place in the world that I have seen the most fantastic sunsets. And I oh. have seen them around the world, but I have to say that every night, no matter whether it rained all day, it almost always presents us with a beautiful sunset at the end of the day. Oh, that's so gorgeous. That, that's really gorgeous. You know, I, I cannot complain because Utah is also a very pretty place. Uh, and we have the mountains here right now. They're still covered in snow. So it's, it's just getting out of the house and looking at nature uh, empowers us to do anything we want in life. And then you, you don't only have that in the morning, at night you can see the sunset. So beautiful. Yes. No, wonder, no wonder you're a great artist because nature is inspiring you all the time. That's very cool. Uh, do you by any chance have any product with you? Like um, a, a, we have a question of... Uh, let me find where it is. But she wants to know how Power Pole looks like. So if you have. Um, no, I you... don't have any okay. products in front of me at the moment. OK. Uh, Leslie Umstead is saying, thank you for doing this live. I will def def definitely look into this new medium. It looks very interesting. Joe Rebecca, runaway ballerina. I love that. Bree's asking, did you make the bike? No, the bike was a purchase piece. Okay. So that's the nice thing about uh, uh, making the sculptures. You can add to anything that you might find. Uh, I will often find, as I said earlier, driftwood, uh, pieces of old car, pieces of bicycles, old gears from uh, big motors and things. And I like to incorporate that into uh, my artwork. That's very cool. Sheila, how wonderfully inspiring with the potential of a new creative addiction. Thank you. Uh, they, uh, Brie, they are all uh, beautiful. And friends, Montreal, wow, excellent work. Now, Dwight, you have prepared a demo for us, right? A quick demo. Tell us a little bit about what we are going to learn. Uh, so what you're going to see is uh, what I call my rough um, metal technique. Uh -huh. I'm going to try to put this so you can see it. I like to work with things that resemble metal. Uh -huh. I am not a welder, but I love the look of it. Uh -huh. So this is a larger piece that you can actually see it on. And when people do come to shows, that's the first thing that attract them. They say, oh, it's all metal. And then you will give them the piece that's often very lightweight for them to pick up. And then it's like they start examining it and they'll say, well, what's it made of? And if I say to them, oh, it's made from a bed sheet, they look at you and it's like they are amazed. So it's, your imagination can just go wild. I and can see it, the, the face has a lot yes. of texture. So that's the bed sheet? Yes, that's a bed sheet. Oh, wow. And I use a lot of sand in uh, my uh, work as well. Uh -huh. um, so this this is made with three products. You have your parva, sorry, you have a parva pole, your parva plast, your art stone, and then the last of the finer texture is made with the parva sand. Wow, beautiful! Is this the type of whale you see on your? Yes, yeah, it's a whale. Oh. I'm too close to be able to. Yeah, when, to show when him. you <laughs> show that in the studio, I actually thought it was a small piece. It's a, quite a large one. No, Gorgeous. it's quite big. Yes, and the, the piece that was on the table when we were looking at the studio, it's a different piece. That one is probably about four feet long. Wow, that's so good. Okay, so let's watch that demo. For Dwight's rough 
metal technique. The supplies you'll need is a jar for your barber pole. I'm using black barber pole. You will need a wide container to catch the sand. You'll need stir sticks, a spoon, and a half an inch brush. A couple of them will be good. A spatula if you want. And you will need one to two teaspoons of parvoplast, a cup of parvopole, one to two teaspoons of art stone, and you'll need one to three teaspoons of parvosan. You'll need acrylic paints. I will be using black, metallic green, and metallic copper. I will start by painting all of the masking tape that is on my project with black parvopole. I liberally apply it with the brush. You don't want it to be drippy, but you do want to have plenty on there to coat your project. This is going to act as a base to apply the rest of our products to. If there are any parts of the masking tape that's not quite stuck at this time, once it starts to dry, you can just press in on it and press it down so that it will stay in place before we apply the next layer. You just need to give it a quick, quick coating all over. I usually apply from the bottom first and then do the top last. It's not important that everything is covered, but try to apply as much as you can evenly. That will need to dry until it's dry to the touch. And when it's dry to the touch, you can then add to your parapet pole a teaspoonful of parvoplast. Give it a good mixing. The consistency that we're looking for is approximately uh, the same as what a very heavy milk would be. So I have time forward and we now have the parvopole completely dried and I'm happy with the consistency of my uh, parvoplasts in here. Um, if you find it's not quite thick enough, just go ahead and add another half a teaspoon. Again, I'm going to apply from the bottom. This time I want to make sure that it is completely covered. And we're just about there, just a little bit more to apply. And that completes it. So again, we will let it dry um, until it's just about completely dry. It has to be dry to the touch. So once it's been dried, I'll speed things up and show you an example. It will be a little bit rough, but not like it was when we applied the parvo pole at first, but it's ready to take the next layer. So to my 
Parva Pole Carver class, I am now going to add uh, some art stone. So approximately a teaspoon right now is what I'm going to add to my jar. And we're going to need this to resemble cottage cheese, basically. So that was not quite enough, so I'm going to add a second teaspoon. This is feeling much better. You want a little bit of lumps in it uh, to give the texture on the sculpture. Just scraping down from the sides. And as you can see, kind of like cottage cheese. So I am going to apply it with a brush. You can go ahead and use a spatula if you want. I have kept the, the, the consistency a little bit more runny. I don't really want uh, too, too heavy on here. It's a small project. If it was a larger project, I would make it um, much thicker than what this one is. And as you can see, I'm not really brushing it on. I'm kind of dabbing it on. And it's flowing quite nicely. And as I get up where the tail is, I will apply a little bit less and making sure I've got everything covered. There we go. Now we need to take our container. Well, this is still wet. And our parmesan. So what I normally do is put it over a container that's going to catch what will fall. I don't really, and I'm kind of just shaking it on. I'm not uh, being precise with anything. And it doesn't need to cover everywhere. It just wants some texture and roughness on it. So I've been doing about a half a teaspoon at a time, so I'm pretty close to about three teaspoons totally. Now I'm just gonna take my fingers and pat it in, just so it will stay. As you can see, there is shiny spots still on there, and that's intentional. Okay, so now we'll let this dry. And when it's dry, we want to let it dry completely. When it is, we'll paint everything black. Um, the Parva sand and the Parva pole um, may not be the same color, so I'm just going to give it a quick little paint all over with black paint. Parva glass all the way. So normally I would let this sit for a few hours until it's completely dry. And when it is completely dry, then I will do my highlighting on it to make it look more like metal. I'll take a fresh brush for this and I'm going to apply my bronze or copper, whatever you have on hand and just take it and dab some of it off. It's not dry brushing. So we're just going to take some dabs randomly 
and apply it all over. With lots of spaces between. I'm happy with that. Now, I'm not cleaning my brush. I'm just going to dry it a little bit. Go right into the green metallic. Do the same thing. Brush off the excess. Just go in, make some little overlapping if you wish. You don't want a lot. A little goes a long ways. If you're not happy when it dries, just go back and apply whichever color you would prefer to have a little more off. Or if you need both of them again, just go back in and do that. Sometimes I mix the both together. Especially for the bottom. Just a little bit darker. And I'm quite happy with this. So again, we'll let it dry completely. And when it has dried completely, uh, then you can go ahead and you can uh, put a shellac on. I personally prefer to put on a shellac that's got quite a shine to it. So this is what they will look like when they are completed. Gorgeous, gorgeous, simply gorgeous. They are awesome. Wow, I was like, I couldn't take my eyes off the screen. Very cool. Uh, Dwight, Joanne is saying, love this, so talented. Leslie, is that way you breakable, like with polymer, if you apply pressure? Uh, like everything, if you apply enough pressure, it will be breakable. But uh, for most items that are used uh, utilitarianly, uh, they won't. Uh, break. If they are frozen and you hit it with something accidentally, it can break, but it's easily fixable as well. That's the one nice thing about the product. Somebody was asking about products earlier. I just yes. wanted to show a few products that are a little bit close here. So uh -huh. these are some of the products that I use today. So we have the wrappers on here, which is what one whale was made from. And then we have the Heartstone and the Parvoplast comes in and Parvopol comes in many different sizes as well. Mm -hmm. And you saw the liquid form of that when I was working with it. And uh, to make the product a, a little bit thicker, we add the Parvoplast to the uh, Parvopol. And uh, you, you want to make it like a very heavy cream. And then to make the texture, we just added the art stone to it. Another product I use a lot of is the stockinette, mm -hmm. uh, which goes into uh, uh, draping very easily. It's a very stretchy product and uh, fun to work with. Very cool. Uh, Joanne is asking, Dwight, why use the power plast? What kind of texture does it make? And what does the power stone offer as texture? Okay, they're very different from each other. Um, the power plast, if you want to use it uh, to make a sculpture very smooth, it uh, makes it thick and not malleable. That's where the art stone comes in. The art stone comes in where you want to make more texture. So pyroplast will make things uh, smooth. If you want to make uh, it look more like a smooth porcelain finish, then you would add the pyroplast to your pyropole, uh, making the product thicker. And you can make it as thick as you wish. But if you want to add texture like I did with these puffins and I did with the whale, then what you would do is use the art stone. And then to add a finer texture, I add the, the, um, the parvis sand to that. So each one of the products uh, have a different purpose. The parvis sand keeps things very strong. So if it is going outside, it uh, will make your, your product uh, a little bit more durable. Um, 
most products are durable once you have the shellac on top of it that helps to protect it as well. So weather-wise, it is uh, perfect to be outside. That's so cool. Very cool. Now, Dwight, for those people that are thinking, oh, I don't know, maybe I should try this, maybe I'm not. I'm a fiber artist, but I don't know, or I'm a mixed media artist, but I don't know. Tell me three reasons why they should pay more attention to this. Fun, more fun. More fun? And a lot right? more fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you are only else. limited to your imagination and you will, for the first time when you put your hands into it and you start working with it, you'll think, oh my gosh, I have so many other things that I want to add this to. Uh, it opens up a whole new world. Uh, you'll never look at uh, anything in the same way. You're thinking, oh, I could incorporate that into a sculpture. And uh, it, it's a whole new world. It's not like any other fiber because you're using fiber and you're actually making it into something that is solidified and it's hard. That's the nice thing about it is it's like when you tap this, it's hard. So once you make it, it's there to stay. When you are just draping on a mannequin, you go to reach for a pin and everything falls down. No, this is here. It's permanent. So nice. it's just wonderful. I love working with the product. That's so cool. Now, Dwight, people now, they know more about you. They, they love your personality. They know you're fun, a fun guy to be around. How can they get in touch with you? And if you use social media, tell us, tell us how can we uh, stalk you all the time to get to know more about what you create? Uh, check out my website, oriscapes.yulicite.com. Um, also, we're on Facebook, and uh, we also have a powerful site in Canada, powerful.ca. Uh, and we have a Facebook page that is uh, powerful.ca as well. So there are many ways. Uh, email is the best way to reach me. I can be reached by a landline. Uh, being remote, we don't have cell service where I live. So wow. it's uh, easy to find me. <laughs> that, that is interesting. No cell phone. So really, I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you. <laughs> <laughs> because then when you go out to dinner with friends, they are not all looking at their cell phones instead of being there with you. I, I have one That's more correct. question from Shawnee. What kind of shellac do you use? The Josephine uh, shellac is wonderful and uh, it comes in a high gloss, which I like to use on a lot of my products. Um, I don't usually use a lot of matte, uh, but I love to use the high gloss. Mm -hmm. And any final words for the people that are here with you today? Explore. Uh, Powerful will change your life. It's uh, very relaxing. You can get lost for hours in the, mm -hmm. uh, working with Powerful. And when you start one project, you'll have several others that's going through your head. And come to Newfoundland and play in my studio. And yeah. uh, you. You'll have a whole new look on life. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. So do you have a calendar of upcoming uh, courses that you have? Uh, I, know, I know the border is still closed, for example, from, for Americans to go to, the Canada, right, to Canada right now. But uh, do you have any, how are, what are your plans for this year? Okay. On my website, you will see uh, classes that are booking now. These are scheduled classes. But the one thing that I have been doing during these COVID times is I do individual classes. So if you want to book an individual uh, class where you are the only person in uh, the room besides me, then I will uh, do a class just for you. Uh, I'll also do a family which are in the same bubble. So we have uh, families that come on a regular basis once a month. So that's a by request and it's a total relaxation time to get away and uh, family bonding. So that's one of the things I enjoy doing and the fact that they allow me to be a part of their lives. That's so cool. That's so cool. Well, you know, I was going to say, if you're too far from Newfoundland, 
Go to powerpal.com, click on distributors, and find someone near you, and you should do that because you, you, want, you, will, you will want to do those courses. But why not plan a trip to Newfoundland? You saw the place. You just saw the place, and you say, okay, I have a gorgeous place, and I have Dwight that is so fun to be with. Yeah, cross a little bit because you're going to love this. Dwight, I cannot thank you enough. Bree is saying, thank you so much. Love your metal technique. Karen, thanks for sharing your technique and pieces with us. I think you open our eyes for possibilities with the recycled material, with the textbooks, with the doilies. I always feel sad when I, I go to a thrift store and I see those doilies there. And I keep thinking, man, those things, they have history behind them, right? Uh, some, somebody's grandma did that. So before discarding history, your family history inside your house, you know, think about, I could create a piece of art with that and Dwight just showed you how. So thank you so much, Dwight. And you know, I really hope we have uh, uh, other chances to, to be working together because you're a fun guy. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, guys, thank you so much for being here with me today. We took a tour in Newfoundland. We met Dwight Saunders. We saw the amazing sculptures that he creates and the possibilities that there are there for you. Uh, on the 27th of May, I'll be here with Tamara from Australia. And we are going to be talking. We start uh, the interview at 2 p.m., mountain time so google where you are to be able to, to be able to be here with us uh, or go to powermondo.com and put your name and email so you get reminders because she's in australia it's 8 a.m there so that's the reason we are moving our time uh here so make sure you're you're there with us because she's going to show a little bit about her country and of course the pieces that she creates. All these interviews, they stay forever, not only at pavermondo.com, but everywhere that you may be watching right now. So why not share this with other people? You know, right now, for example, we all know, we may not talk too much about it, but we know there is a high level of stress and frustration uh, and, and, you know, even uncertainty of what am I going to do next in certain situations. So by inspiring people to start creating, you're doing them a huge favor. First of all, because if they start playing with power pole and, and fabric and whatever they use, uh, the stress will come out. It will allow their brain to breathe a little good things. The vibration will go up, you know, and then they are going to start seeing new possibilities for themselves and their lives. Not only that, in many cases, it also shows them a new road uh, to, to work on and sell pieces or, you know, if they have the certification to, to start teaching. And that can be very rewarding as well. So share. Don't, don't be share shy. That's not a good thing to be. Just put it out there. And you, you may not even know who you're going to inspire, but somebody will watch and will say, you know what, maybe I have a new road to follow. And that's what we want here. Share this interview, share all the others that we have, and don't forget to be here with me and Tamara uh, next, not next uh, Thursday, but on the 27th of May, okay? I hope you have enjoyed this. Uh, thank you so much for your participation. Uh, not only me, but the artists, they always appreciate this, that you're engaging and you're you know, asking them questions. It's, it's just, again, puts our vibration here, and that's where it needs to be. So let's go, like Nashla says all the time, create beautiful things. I'll see you next time.